welcome, welcome, welcome to the turntable with Ari Styles, D Money and Shiki on Active FM where radio has never been better. Yes, this is the turntable, and I am Ari Styles. And remember, we keep you learned and get you turned. And I'm D Money, and you know, we'll be bringing you the facts, playing you the tracks. Right, so we're back at it again. Today we're discussing another record label. You have to bark, D. You can do it. I can't do it. I <laughs> sound like a small out. dog. <laughs> and if I sound, I'm going to sound like a chihuahua, so <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> when the dogs is out. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about Rough Riders. So Rough Riders is our record label. Start with. Mm, start Rough Riders is a movement, man. It wasn't just a record label. Yeah. I think it artists, managers, mm, yeah. producers. It's Bikes, dogs, yeah. cars, stabins, they okay. were moved. Yeah. So uh, Rough Riders Entertainment is a, it's, it's a, it's like, uh, it's in a, rec- it's a record label and a management company, but it was founded by siblings, the siblings jo- Joaquin, Wad, Darren D, and Siobhan Dean, right? Uh, it first started as a, a, ma- a management company uh, for the locks. The locks. And then and, and, and DMX, mm-hmm. right? Um, I, I don't think that's where... Um, the locks went into signed to, sa- sa- sign to bed, signed to bed boy, right? Mm. Um, and then DMX couldn't find a deal. They were trying to get him a deal, and he wasn't able to get a deal. Yeah, and then basically, um, in 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 ninety in ninety seven, uh, so Dave Jam was there was there was a slight dip, right? In um, in their in their what's it called? I think sales or. They were almost bankrupt, and yeah. they were gonna. Basically, the FJ made a situation where if they went to find death, to debt, the company that they owed the money to could take over the FJ. Yeah, um, and then that's when um, they got a deal with uh, the FJ for DM for DMX. Uh, Irv Gotti, Murder yeah. Inc. Irv yeah. Gotti brought in because he was an A and R at the FJ at yeah. that point in time, and he believed in DMX from the eighties. Jay as well, so he actually assisted him in bringing Jay in. And bring DMX in. He was really passionate about DMX, so they signed DMX. Yeah, and then that's when Rough Riders basically became a, a label because he was signed label. to like either a production deal or a joint venture between Rough Riders and Def Jam. And then we all know what happened in in '98 with, uh, with, with, with the two albums. With the, with the, with the two albums, and it that, that basically um, catapulted uh, Rough Riders into the mainstream. Tell us what happened yeah. in '98. We don't know. Yeah, we were, I would have been six or seven years old at that point. Right, so in May 12th, 1998, uh, uh, DMX released his first studio album. It, it's Dark, Dark in Ellis Art. In Ellis Art, right? Um, that was Rough Riders' first release, right? Um, because of its, um, basically, because of its success. Um, at that Partly time, because of its success and because Def Jam was so desperate at that point. Yeah. Um, that's when they, had, uh, they, 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 they signed, then they started signing artists. Rough Riders basically started, uh, they signed artists like, such as Loose, Big Stan, um, and Drag On, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then later on, I um, think um, Dame, they, 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 they had producers, which was PK and Dame Grease, um, as well as, like I told you, the founders, the deans, the subbies, yeah. uh, their nephew. Uh, we all know him as Swiss, Swiss Beats, right? Um, yeah, so this was beats learned to produce from those other from producers, Dame's and then he became the sound uh, of Rough Riders. Yeah, and then he became the sound of Rough Riders. But yeah, I say, and still on that uh, ninety-eight, that was uh, X DMX dropped his first album, and then he was challenged by. They Leo paid Cohen. him a million. Yeah, to, to if he could drop another album in the same year. Yeah, which he actually did was. What was the album? Or uh, Flesh of My Flesh, Flesh Blood of, of My Blood. Blood of My Blood, yeah. yeah like I'm yeah. saying, because yeah. of the desperate times of Def Jam, yeah. they, they, for that period of time, they needed to bring in a certain amount of income. So yeah. if he released that album within that year, that falls within the financial year. That's why they actually yeah. did that. And, and, and he was the first artist to have two number one yeah, albums in sep- the same yeah, year. Separately in yeah. Same year. And two well, multi platinum selling yeah. albums in the same yeah. year. That Flesh of My Flesh came out in December 98. So you could see, as you were saying, because of the to get it within the year, yeah. To get it, to get it within the year, um, yeah. Then basically, um, in late um, in two thousand, in two thousand, that's when Rough Riders now was was established speaking, as a label. Established as a label. Um, then around about in year two thousand, um, if you know about Eve. Well, before that, you got an important fact. You must remember Lo- the Locks is the first artist on. On Rough Riders is management. His management yeah. They they do a deal through Bad Boy. They still been managed by Rough Riders. Yeah. Rough Riders then becomes a label. 
the locks is on bad boy they fight which i think we spoke about as one of the we, we did a bad boy episode last mm-hmm. week they fight to get off bad boy they do the whole free the locks campaign assault in puffy type of thing uh, claiming to not actually do it uh and then they act they get off bad boy and then join back with the family and they r- rough riders once again yeah. and they release we are the streets a gold album so that's also there around the time when eve is coming through and then basically in 2000 um they uh they have to rough riders has a deal with interscope mm-hmm. right um and it's yeah def jam was uh dmx was the only artist on def jam oh, yeah. no ah yeah so after what's it called so rough riders had a deal with interscope uh, inter- and they're then in 2000 march 28 2000 i spoke about dragon his, mm-hmm. his debut album only came, came out in, in 2000 Yeah. Remember we, we, we were signed in 1997, 1998. Yeah, when you got the success, it, it usually happens on labels when you have one artist or two artists that are really successful, the other ones end up falling to the wayside and their things don't drop. But with Eve as well, she was on Innerscope. They brought her to Dr. Dre. Yeah. Dr. Dre couldn't get things right or it wasn't right and that's how they moved her to yeah. Rough Riders. Yeah. So and I, she I, fit in I, perfectly. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was coming to that one. I apologize. What, uh, what, what, what Eve, Eve was on... Um, so uh, through interscope went through to uh doctor after met and i couldn't get it right at, 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 at that time uh and it's supposed at the same time eminem yeah. came in mm-hmm. and because when eminem came in um all the artists was put on a back burner so she that same thing i just said yeah. now about the success yeah. so i just wanted to mention eminem yeah, yeah i was looking for oh, there was a way there was a yeah, way i was looking for an there was a way um wherever there's a wall there's a way um yeah but anyway then then um the locks comes back to craft riders am i, am I correct once around the same time it's happening yeah. there then they yeah. drop we are the street yeah um because the debut album i think was 99 on i uh, 98 sorry on bad boy right um then in 2003 in 2003 that's when okay rough riders became a movement by that by that by that specific time yeah they had a whole lot of things yeah. going on they, they were always a movement because myself rough riders started off as the biker gang type thing and, yeah. and all that before they were a label mm. so they were always a movement with the dogs mm. the other stuff the stabbings like i said yeah like 1988 that's when they actually yeah and they exist till today is yeah. like biker yeah. gangs and things that's like that's when that. the biker gang started basically yeah and then in, two th- in 2003 uh rough rider had to deal with the, in- the rough riders deal with in the interscope uh records ended right mm-hmm. then um only then although J- jerick is eve and styles styles spirit still remain on interscope um then uh rough riders basically signed a joint venture deal with uh, Virgin Records and the same year uh, Rough Rider signs a uh, Miami Florida born Chinese rapper by the name of Chen right MC Chen MC Chen yeah he rose to fame basically on the what of on Freestyle Friday rap battles which was on the BTS 106 in Park mm mm-hmm. right um the first release under uh, Rough Rider's first release under the Virgin their version deal was with Dragon's second studio album, Hell and Back, right? Um, yeah, then... That was more of like the decline when the label started was declining, yeah. because... Well, I was about some movement because yeah. um, regardless of the label moving somewhere else, the artists were still performing, so you still mm-hmm. had the locks doing their thing, you still had a solo artist, the locks, and they were still associated or still signed through mm-hmm. Rough Riders, and then DMX still on Def Jam, and DMX dropped, I think, Grand Champ and things like that mm-hmm. around that time, around that time. and he's still Rough Riders at that point, yeah. even though their deal is somewhere else, you still, still signed through them. You yeah. still signed through them, yeah. Um, then and I don't think it ever, ever declined, because Rough Riders was like a... St- it's a name in a movement that will always be around always be synonymous with hip hop always be synonymous with DMX so it's it's more of the like basically the the billboards same and same like you know, with death row and things like that. they came they gone but they still yeah yeah hold the a certain weight yeah rough riders are, rough riders is a big thing what a big thing i will yeah. share I will, i will share something right about rough riders right okay. um not the I'm condoms uh, the, the in the 2003 my oh. metric ball yeah right uh, i went and should not said the year but anyway <laughs> In 2003, my Madrid boy, okay. I got the the I got I got you know that used to wear a big chains or the yeah, yeah with the R on it. R R yeah. I I put with my uh, shouldn't have shared that story as well. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> it was a proud moment to get a chain. No, of course. Uh, um, yeah. So it, so artists that 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 was under Rough Riders uh, is Big Stan, Cassidy, DMX, 
track on. Yes, he was signed to to Swiss, so he was associated with Rough Riders, but I don't think mm. he was ever Rough Riders. So yeah. also had his own kind of That's thing. what I'm saying. Yeah. Cassidy came yeah. through Swiss's own yeah. situation, yeah. but I think it was it had and something uh, to do with Rough Riders. Yeah. 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 So Swiss Beats, he signed as, as an artist and as a producer, mm-hmm. right? Then we have Eve, we have Fiend, Infrared and Cross, The Locks, right? Um, MC Jun, Young Woon, Loose, Parley, and the in-house producer was DJ I Rock, DJ Shock, PK, Dame Chris, um, Dame Chris, I Speak J, right? Yeah. Yeah, I speak. I think up until recently, still had a relationship with Jay because they used yeah. to work together and things. Still recently. Yeah, I think he passed away. Yeah, that's why his album Ignatius was about or something like. Yeah. I check that album out. It's great. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Rough Riders legacy will always live on. Yeah, of course, and you still got the locks extremely prevalent till today mm. and relevant. Eve is Eve. Put pool um, in a skirt. Yeah, the put pool. Obviously, DMX passed away, but DMX will be DMX forever. Yeah. So. And the last, the last actual album or that was released was in 2009, The Last Kiss by Jada Kiss. Yeah. That and was. I think Jada Kiss is on Def Jam now. Yeah. Um, DM. DMX, do you, do, you, do you know DMX played a pivotal role in, in discovering the locks? Yeah, I think he brought them to Rough yeah. Riders. Yeah. Because um, DMX was far older than them. As we, as we were speaking earlier about uh, Def Jam going under, Rough Riders saved Def Jam. Yeah, yeah. From going under, yeah. The success of DMX and then Warren G and there were a few other people that came in and basically did serious numbers that helped the label. And as we mentioned, Eve was on. Aftermath. Another iconic label, Aftermath. We, s- we spoke about this. I know we spoke about it, but I'm just emphasizing it. You, you, why did you just come all the way back around to say the same thing? Because I want to say the same thing. Come on. Stan. <laughs> all right. Stan Lee. It does interval the fly as well. All right. I today. just wanted to end up with a... Yeah, and end off with a bark. With the Aftermath. Do a little bark for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 That was Rough Riders. Okay, so today our new uh, or our artist that we're focusing on, our Christian artist, would be it's actually a group. They call the Cross Movement. And not Cross as in Angry Ari. Cross as in. Yeah, Cross. The cross. <laughs> yes, I understand, so, understand. Uh, so the members are the Ambassador, Cruz, Corredero, Enoch, Earthquake, The Tonic, Fanatic, and True Life. Yeah, it's Cruz Codero, not Corrodero. It's Cruz Codero. True life. True life, True life yeah. Real Virgil name is Virgil Bird. Bird. Virgil Bird. Okay, Mr. Well, there was another rapper, True Life, but I highly doubt he was part of a... It was a True, true, true Life. No, that was True Life Crew. One no, True you. Life. True Life. Is it TR? You signed to Rockefeller. Okay. Okay, right. so the cross movement has three separate uh, distinct components. Okay, so that's like... CM is the first one, which is the Christian hip hop, a group known as the Cross Movement, uh, which composed of several like rappers. Then they do have the second component, which is CMR, the Cross Movement Records, which is their label. So that uh, some of the artists that l- released albums on there were The Truth and Flame. We have uh, out spoken on him before if you heard any of our previous episodes Fiki. La Flemme La Flemme and the last one is CMM the third aspect and to be honest with you I haven't heard any of our previous episodes I'm here when we're recording it why do I have to still listen to it you need to listen to it you need to listen to yourself <laughs> listen to I yourself. hate the sound of my own voice but anyway then continue. how do you expect other people to like it oh they like it okay okay then the last one is the CMM which is a cross movement ministries which aims to use creative ways to spread the Christian gospel message within hip hop culture. Okay, and then, okay, so that is the group. Ari, anything you'd like to add on uh, this? Mm, not really. I can tell you, they. I can tell you they have run about s- seven, seven albums, right? Yeah. They um the 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 music they were from ninety six to no 90 yeah 90 96 to 2008 2008 to 2008 yeah, yeah. um and then they have three compilation albums mm-hmm. all right and also but about them they 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 chose to define it themselves as a christian or holy division of hip-hop culture as opposed to like hip-hop or rap diversion of christian culture within the genre of rap music 
so uh, they like the such as like basically various sub genres they do have which is like gangster rap conscious rap and old school rap so they more on kind of holy rap so they but different yeah. in there so they uh, so, so 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 i they take physically from the bible um well, what's called verses from the bible and they flip and then they flip it and they make it into they made yeah. it into they take a verse and make it into a verse into a verse yeah. That was a double entendre for you there, sir. Okay. I can rap too if I wanted to. <laughs> okay, let's let's hear you rap. No, 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 we can't do that. Okay. <laughs> I think it was the cross movement. Next, we're going to pass it on to this little guy to my left who gets all big and excited with emotion when he's about to say these things. It's this past week in hip-hop history. September 25th, 1980. Before, 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 before you, before you get there. We first gotta just say send a rest in peace to a uh, legendary artist that passed away this oh, week, yeah. Coolio. If you see, don't know, see, I, 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 I really don't, don't, I really don't like it when when someone steals my dust past because we It's not history. history. It happened this it's week. It's, it's, it's not history. It is. It's, it's not history. That I, yeah, we, I can't believe we almost forgot about that because it's not history. Yeah. That's Coolio so made the legendary news. soundtrack Gangsters Paradise. Said I'll see you when you get there. A few other joints, the Keenan and Kel um, intro song. Mm. Rest in peace to Coolio. He never thought he'll make it to 24, but like D said, he made it to 59. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you know the song, you know what we mean. Okay. Go sit in my time. This past week in hip hop history. I will never feel it. Yeah. Say it again with more <laughs> conviction. <laughs> This past week in hip hop history. They like, they like me how I say it. Um, September 25th, 1980, T.I. was born. Top. King of the South. September 25th, Will Smith was born. Shine. So on December, what date was it? September 25th. So w- what date is it now? Ah, anyway, on September 25th, we should have went around smacking people, just in honor of Will Smith. <laughs> you can't, it's my birthday. Also. <laughs> oh, crap, I should have smacked you. I smacked you. We saw you just did it as your birthday. <laughs> uh, sub- September 2000, Shine releases his debut album. Uh, if you don't know Shine, he was someone that sounded a lot like Biggie. Yeah. He was signed to Bad Boy Shiny as well. Bad Boy, yeah. we, oh, we spoke about him we last week. Last we did a Bad Boy episode. Yeah, he was the one that went to prison. Yeah. Um, September 2011, J. Cole releases Cole, uh, releases Cole World, The Sideline Story. Um, okay, we spoke about Coolio. Rest in peace, Coolio. It happened this week. Uh-huh. Uh, Most Def and Talib Koli, uh, Black Star is released. That's the album called They, they, they Name It. Uh, album Black Star. Mm-hmm. Uh, just on a side note, Talib Kweli will be in the country in the next few weeks, I think. Okay. Performing September some Back to the City thing. Oh yeah, Back to the City Festival. Yeah. Talib Kweli will be there. Yeah. Uh, September 1998, Outcast releases uh, Aquamani. 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 Okay, thank you. You're back to struggling. You release the third album. Oh, most of words. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, Jay-Z, September... 1998, Jay-Z releases Volume 2, Hard Knocks Life. Volume 2? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was his breakout album that did like 8 million. And that was the album that really blew up Jay-Z. Yeah. Pip, uh, uh, opposed to people's popular belief that Jay was big forever. No. Yeah. Reasonable Doubt didn't do well. Second album just went platinum. That was the breakout. Yeah, because of the Hard Knocks Life, Hard Knocks Life song. Uh, September 1997, Common releases One Day It All Makes Sense. It's its third album. Uh, September 2008, T.I. releases Paper Trail. Oh, it's T.I. twice on there. Yeah, it, the first was his birthday. Mm. I'm away, I remember. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, a Tribe Called Quest released their fifth album, September 1998, The Love Movement. Curtis Blow, self-titled album uh, in September 1980, um, was released. Mm. KRS One released his first solo album, Return of the Boom Bap, in September 1993. That was the comeback for KRS One somewhat. Yeah. Uh, Method Man and, Re- and Red Man, September 1999, released their debut album, Blackout. Thug Life uh, releases their debut album, uh, vol- Thug Life Volume One, September 1994. Please tell us people what Thug Life stands for. The hate you give little infants f's everybody. Oh yeah, I forgot about what the f was. You couldn't <laughs> say it. Cool G rap. Uh, oh, by the way, Thug Life was. A lot of people don't know. They didn't want as big as Outlaws. Thug Life was Tupac's group. Tupac's group, yeah. Um, 
Cool G Rap uh, releases the debut solo album 456 in September 1995. One thing on Cool G Rap, the whole mafiazo, somewhat gangster rap, but infused with the mafiazo style that Biggie and Rayquan and all of them had in the 90s. That style comes from Cool G Rap. A lot of people don't give him credit because he never u- really moved units like that and things like that. But that entire style originated from Cool G Rap. Okay, mm-hmm. A Tribe Called Quest released their second album, The Low End Theory, in September 1991. Okay, uh, that was a very important and great album, but can you please tell them what The Low End Theory is? Yeah. It's about the, the okay. lower end. Okay, if I'm you see the album cover, you yeah, know I what I'm Yeah, I'm looking at the album cover, um, that's why I'm just keeping <laughs> <laughs> about the low end. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say anything. The lower. Okay, it's fine. End. It's fine. Don't Where the power the comes from. All right, yeah. <laughs> from underground. Um, <laughs> the the ru- the Roots released a third album, Ila, Ila Delph Half Life. No, oh, are you in words? Yeah. Ila Delph Half Life, <laughs> September 1996. <laughs> what, what did I say, right? It continues. Right. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's okay. okay. And then that was it for this past week in hip hop history. That's too. Now, before we come, we're going to make flashcards. Yeah. And I write the words for you, and we're going to pull out the flashcards and let you say it like you're learning to yeah. talk. Yeah. yeah. I think you need to do that, man. I think so, too. Because, <laughs> hey, the some, some of these words, it's a bit challenging, man. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not. It's challenging for you. <laughs> for you. Don't, don't say challenging like it's all of us up here that struggle to say words. You. You struggle <laughs> to say words. Yeah. At least I can pronounce names. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this stuff, <right? laughs> Come, let's create the hype. Let's create the hype. Yeah. Any who? Any who? It was the turntable on Active FM. Where radio has never been better with Ari Styles, D Money, and Ashik Singh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I just put my name out there. Yeah. One is ID number, go, go number two. Google me. Okay, <laughs> yes, this is a turntable where we keep you learned and get you turned. Okay, so before we end it, we just want to leave you with a verse, which comes from Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And before we end it, do you, do you guys notice I'm setting a trend? My guy over here has got, got shades. I'm actually also having shades. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that. Listen, I'm not from Durban. I don't wear glasses <laughs> indoors. <laughs> that yeah. was a shot at all the Durbanites. I just hope you caught it. <laughs> <laughs>